Hello and welcome to the MBS Show, episode number five. I'm your host Norman Sanzo, and my co-host today is Amiro. Bonjour. You're going to be as my acting co-host for Emilio's absence. Yes. I think nobody knows you yet, so we shall go into the four basic questions. Question number one is, who's your favorite pony? Ah, that's that's a very simple question. My favorite pony would have to be Star Sword and Bearded. Okay, um, that's a very interesting answer. Um, why? Because he's he's smart. As some artists not, because uh, well, he he does. He's pretty smart, I guess. He has his own wing in the Cantalot archives and everything. And I myself, I'm a seeker of knowledge, and I love Bearded. Wow. That's an interesting answer. Um, your favorite episode? My favorite episode would have to be the Flim Flim Flam Brother, uh, Side the Squeezy Six Thousand, oh. the Flim Flam Brothers episode. The same one as Haziz. Okay, that's cool. Oh, Yay. yep. Question number three is: How did you get into the pony thing? Ah, uh, I was a beatard, and when ponies came to be, everything was magical. Okay, so you were on Fortune then. Fortune. Yep, I was be... on Fortune when it, when it all started. Fortune was pretty awesome. So not, um, not, not, not that it's not awesome now. It has its but, levels now. Yep. What do your family and friends think about your love for the show? Ah, uh, well, most of my friends don't know and don't care. I've converted one of my friends. I converted my brother, and I'm going to show my mom, uh, MLP if I am uh, sometime tomorrow, I guess. Oh, okay. Do tell us because that would be an interesting story. Yeah, she got bored watching all the shows on TV, and so then she decided to go watch ponies because she knows I like ponies. Okay, um, that's interesting. On to our next host, and this is going to be a permanent host. She's very special. Um, she did come on once, and it was not on the previous episode. It's Joey. Hi guys. So, um, Joey, what decided you to come back to this chaos? Well, because I I think it's really fun interacting with you guys. Yay! Especially when Emilio's not around, right? <laughs> Yep. Okay. So we already know your answer from previous episodes, and so we don't need to ask you those questions. As normal, we have a guest on every show, and our guest is Andrew Ng. Hi. How's it going, guys? It's me from Australia, down under. We're talking about yeah, awesome stuff. Uh, how's it going? We're doing great. We're doing great. Yeah, Andrew. Awesome. Is, it already, is it already April Fools there? Pretty much. We're we're kind of like we can't think of what to do, so we feel like. They're just gonna watch the movie and like chillax and stuff. We're still operating in Malaysian time, so there will be no trolling <laughs> as of yet. Forty-five oh, minutes to go. I know. Okay. So we're gonna start off with the four basic questions, and question number one yeah. is: Who's your favorite pony? Ever since I got in the show, I've been like Applejack. But uh, if you're talking about background pony, it's probably Octavia oh. and DJ Pony, the, the two musical ponies. I mean, uh, musical ponies. But I realized that my my love for ponies has changed over the years, and it just keeps going. It keeps, it keeps changing and changing. I don't have an actual like a pony that I actually like. Uh, I guess Applejack would be just fine. So it's Applejack, Octavia, and DJ Pony three then. Yeah, I guess so. Oh, okay, so your favorite episode? Favorite episode? Oh, good question. Uh, I have a lot, just to let you know. But uh, to find for the really good one, uh, I think the one that really connected my New South, New South Wales Bronies all together is probably uh, Rain, uh, Sonic Rainbow. That actually got everyone all together. I think, personally, I like every show in My Little Pony because they taught a lot of things to me. But if you're talking about a special one to my setup, it's probably the Rainbow, uh, Sonic Rainbow, because it actually got the New South Wales ponies all together, and that's really good. We are actually going to show a My Little Pony uh, episode, like in cinema. Like we we actually hired a cinema, and we're going to watch all the uh, My Little. Wow, <laughs> that's going to be amazing. So, um, how did you get into the pony fandom thing? Uh, basically, I was just. Usually wasting my time on uh, 4chan and doing uh, my usual stuff. I think just like Army Road. I think October 2010, I was like chilling at uh, 4chan as usual. And basically, it was just saw some like people were like, oh hey, there's something going on that cartoon and it's just good stuff. And uh, I kind of got addicted to the show. Addicted on. Uh, okay, so it's like Army Road then. Okay, so um, what do your families and friends think about your love for the show? Uh, I got a lot of my friends becoming bonus because of my, like, it's like, you gotta watch this, this is really good stuff. And then, like, everyone's like, I don't understand. What is so good about this show? And, like, everyone's like, oh, this show is good. 
it's really good. And then my, my family members were like, uh, that's not really actually cool. It's actually quite childish. But uh, let me tell you one thing, very interesting thing. My grandpa is a pony. I ever, ever know that. No one actually know that. Uh, I, I tried to tell Ikuti once, but no one actually bothered. And he actually got, got a rainbow dash, and he told me there was a place in Taiwan that actually watches My Little Pony, which actually exists. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, wait, uh, your grandfather's a Taiwanese? No, he had, he's a Malaysian. Did your granddad watch G1? Uh, surprisingly, no. He knew, he knew uh, G4 long before I knew he watches My Little Pony, because my mom caught him watching once. Let's go on to housekeeping. Update on the show's audio location. As you may know, the show is currently posted on soundcloud.com. But as of this episode, we will have to change the location of the show to YouTube. The reason for this is the MBS show has ran out of space on SoundCloud. For us to keep using SoundCloud as our usual place to post new content every week, we need to upgrade our current service on SoundCloud. We are not asking for donations or anything like that, but if you would like to support the show, we will think of something so that you guys can help us. If there are any questions you would like to ask, just send an email to the MBS show at gmail.com. Right, sounds neat. Eh, not really. We have to change a lot of things. We have to transfer everything. So I really don't want to move from SoundCloud, but I have only three minutes to spare on SoundCloud. So either upgrade or move. And the upgrade thing is not an option. Oh, but it's easier to listen to on YouTube. So, mm. By the way, my, my mom decided to listen on, in on this. So, mm. yeah, well, I'm screwed. Okay, then. No problem. So, uh, let's get on to the news topic. In today's news topic, Season 1 DVD set are coming to Australia soon. The DVD set will be available on 20th of June. The price of the DVD will cost around 20 Aussie dollars. And for an added 10 Aussie dollars, you can get the collector's box set. Each DVD will feature 5 episodes and it will be in 5.1 surround sound. The DVD will be set to Region 4. To list out some of the countries that are listed in Region 4, and they are Mexico, South America, Central America, Caribbean, New Zealand, Australia, Papua New Guinea, and much of the Oceania. And on an added note, the collector's box set is the best-selling DVD on the website where you can pre-order the DVD. That is easydvd.com.au. So, Andrew, as being an yeah. Aussie, have you pre-ordered yours yet? Pretty much everyone here already has done this. Basically, and we're just all playing like, okay, who's going to do it? And who's going to like put in the money and stuff? Because uh, most of the admins really are discussing about it. We're actually like playing out some kind of formation to go and get this done. It's kind of like awesome because like, it's actually uh, viewers haven't get it, then they're like raging at us and saying, Oi, why we haven't get our CD yet? And it's like, we got it and like, yay, that's really cool, you know? Well, lucky for you, but for us in Malaysia, we don't get what we... Well, we don't get it. We have to wait. Dude, 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 dude. I can always help you to get and skip it to you. You know what I mean? Yeah, I okay. Can, like, mail it to you. Okay, that's interesting. Anyway, so Amira, what do you think about the DVDs? I would like those DVDs very, very much. But unfortunately, they were only available in Australia. Or, well, they're going to be released in Australia soon. Yeah, and Andrew can help but us get them. So, uh, Joey, what do you think about the DVDs? That was awesome. I totally get my hoops on them. Everybody here loves the DVD but can't get them. Uh, but it's just... No problems. No, but the thing is, it's just five episodes in one disc. And the disc is going to come out one by one. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm not interested in the disc. I'm just interested in the box. Well, we just have to wait and see then. So, if it does come to Malaysia, who's going to buy it? I, I just want the box, so I'll wait some, for someone else to buy it. I don't know who's going to answer this now. Uh-huh. Joey, um, if we come into Malaysia, you're going to buy it? Yeah, I will. Okay, that's cool. So, let's go on to the next topic. It's time to duel with ponies! That's my Yugi impression. Yes. The company Enterplay has declared that they are going to make a My Little Pony trading card. You can expect the cards to be released in June. Um, it is to be noted that the term trading card and trading card games are two entirely different products. Trading cards are cards that you collect and trade with your friends. And an example of this are baseball cards, while trading card games are used to be played, collect, and trade with. An example of this are trading card games like Magic the Gathering, Yu-Gi-Oh! and Card Fight Vanguard. Um, it is also to be noted that Hasbro is a subsidiary company for Wizard of the Coast, the creators of Magic the Gathering. What do you guys think? 
Sounds very relevant to me. Back then in my days when I was in high school, well, I think primary school, I used to be a chronic collector of cards, I guess. I guess uh, I'll just get a job in Chinatown and uh, get some gay cash and, you know, get myself on this gay cash. I mean, like, gay cards, you know, these, these cards. They're so freaking gay, you know what I mean? Huh? Okay, but... <laughs> okay. I, I don't know. They, they might they might paper cut me. I don't like getting paper cut. I might beat the desk. Joey? It was awesome, but if I once got all the cards, I would never trade it. <laughs> okay, but well, here's my issue with the whole thing. It's a trading card. Basically, you're not going to play with it. You're just going to collect them. How do I put this? It's just collecting pieces of paper that you could print out yourself. My biggest issue is it's just a collectible card. If it were a card game, it would make me go crazy and I'll buy a lot of them. The boosters, the starter box, and so on. If it were a card game, then it will have more reason for me to buy. Yeah, that's true. I, I can agree with that. People will want to collect cards, seriously. I mean, it's, it has it has some sentimental value and it's really good. So uh, I'll definitely get, pay a lot to get these kind of cards. For me, I won't get them. I'm a person that likes to have a reason to buy stuff. Like, for me, buying stuff just for the sake of buying stuff is not fun. Well, sadly, I wouldn't get these cards. Anyway, on to the next topic. Uh, My Little Pony, Friendship is Magic, the mobile video game? It's time to raise your phone and throw it against the wall. <laughs> okay. In a recent news report on PocketGamer.biz, the mobile video game company Gameloft announced some of its future title release. One of the titles should be of interest, and that is My Little Pony. Can we expect a My Little Pony Friendship is Magic video game soon? I don't really play that many games on the phone, so I don't know. It probably would be just pony sprites. I was kind of wonder- wondering what type of game will it be? It's role-playing or adventure or other stuff like that? Uh, I guess uh, if it hits to the drawing community, I think we could, like, everyone would just practically buy it and like play with it, you know, like play the game. But uh, I think technically wise, I think it will be targeted towards mainly girls and uh, like, like actually mature women as will play it as well, mature women. Mm-hmm. They'll definitely play it because it's cute. But uh, it's probably also a starting point to like market the idea of My Little Pony towards overseas and I mean everywhere around the world and people will be like, oh my gosh, it's new My Little Pony game. It's really good, you know? Okay, so uh, anyway, uh, Gameloft, those are the people that make some of the movie title release for smartphones. I've, I've heard Gameloft's name quite a lot. It, I don't really know what kind of game it is. I just I just hope it's not going to be like that app. That's, that was boring. No, actually, there was a yeah. book. Here are some of the, of the lists that um, Gameloft has made. They made um, Real Football 2012. It's a uh, winning 11 or... Pro Evolution Soccer ripoff, and then they they made NFL Pro 2012. Um, they also made Gangstar Rio, City of Saints. Um, it's like a GTA clone. Um, they made the Adventure of Tintin, the game. Uh, they made um, Brothers in Arm two, and they they made a lot of games. Most of them are actions, and some of okay, let, like one here, Let's Golf three. And Alpha Halt 6. So, I mean, some of the games they made are pretty good. Mostly adult-based, but I'm not really sure. They do have some kiddie games like Shrek Forever After, the mobile game, Spider-Man, Total Mayhem, uh, and Iron Man 2, Prince of Persia, Warrior Within. I mean, they, they made a lot of games, really. I'm suspecting something kind of that. Could, could um, be I'm fighting is bad. Could it be fighting is magic? Nah. It's going to be on the mobile platform. So it's going to be on Apple's iOS device and Android and so on. So I, w- I don't think it's going to be that big of a spread. So it's going to be on the mobile. So you have to think about point and touch. Mm-hmm. Pretty much, yeah. I guess, I guess, I, guess uh, I think how they're going to set layout is probably, uh, you know, like... You need to get Pinkie Pie to complete this and did like let's for example like we collect the pies and make this in this time limit. Nah. I don't know. Let's so hope not. Uh, let's hope it's an RPG like a My Little Pony RPG on the phone. Like that would be cool. Like spend hours on your phone. Yeah, yeah. Okay, but here's another issue. 
I listed out the news as My Little Pony Friendship is Magic, the mobile game. But in the article, the pocketgame.biz wrote is Gameloft is making a My Little Pony game. So it does not say anything else. So we could experience G3.5 here. I would deny its existence. <laughs> so, um, well, don't get your hope too high on this as it may be a trap. On today's guest time, our guest is Andrew Erng. He's a Bromini diplomat, and listen to him explain what does it mean and what does he do. So, Andrew, you're a Bromini diplomat. Yep. Could you explain to us what does it mean? There's a lot of ways I can tell you about this, what I do. Uh, you want me to tell you how I began, how, what do I do, synopsis of what do I do, everything. Okay, so you do almost everything. So, um, your position... No, 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 no. What do you want me to tell you? What do you want me to tell you? Oh, um, never mind. We have that later on. So, but we just want to, like... What do you do in a nutshell? Uh, basically, I I visit as many pony groups as possible, like on rainbow-dash.com and, uh, and mostly Facebook groups. I have quite as many Facebook groups as I can. Oh, okay. And every time EQD comes up with one, then I just go there and join them. And basically, I just see what's going on <laughs> and uh, pretty much find out what they do. And... I don't, I don't try to get as much information from them because it will be picking up too much, but I'm just learning what they do and kind of keep them updated on what's going on around the world, basically. We have some questions for you. Joey, you want to start? All right. What does it mean to be a brony diplomat? And what do you do as a brony diplomat? Uh, my role is kind of uh, very, very uh, ambiguous. And, you know, it's it started off as a me, just me and Derek. Me and Derek comes with this plan of uh, trying to get all the bronies on the world to get into one spot and stuff like that. And to do that, we need to kind of uh, join many groups and get to know them and try to get them into this group. But I realized that this is not going to work because most of them won't want to get off the shelves and it's, it's not going to be as good because EQD is the one that is helping them out. I mean, like, it's getting them all the news around the world now. So what I do now is I go into these groups and I find out what's going on, like PonyCon, uh, uh, PHCon in Manila, and and the daily SBS meetups in Singapore, and uh, the, the Svenka Bonis, which means the the Swedish Bonis meetups, and pretty much Texas and what's going on around there. A lot of those places, I just visit there and just find out what's going on there, and uh, telling everyone what's cool, and what's going on? Yeah, that's all. As a diplomat, you must have joined a lot of brony groups. How many have you joined? Oh, uh, I think currently I've joined about twenty plus more, twenty plus plus. Mm-hmm. It's it's growing more in my group now that uh, EQD has revealed more of these groups on uh, the internet. And with the reach of the internet, I actually get, uh, spend more time like trying to get to know them, and it's kind of easy. Yeah, mm-hmm. uh, that's. In summary, I've got more than like uh, twenty to thirty. I, I haven't checked my 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 status or whatever ever since uh, ever since last week. Oh, okay, so um, when you go to group to group, you help yeah. them out or or you promote something or what do you do? Uh, basically, uh, we just find out what's going on, like like you know EQD stuff, and they haven't that have that EQD item there. I'll just post it there. Other than that, if they want to just, like convey a message to another pony group and like say, "Oh, we need some help," like like let's say Derek has his game project, and I just help convey the message around, and generally people just get the idea and like they help and stuff. That's how that's how Derek got his uh, some of his Australian like helpers and some Singaporean guys to come over and help. Here's another question. Uh, I've heard you are the admin of the Bronies of New South Wales. Correct, I am. Oh, okay. So, are you a founding member of the Bronies of New South Wales? Yes, I am among the three of the founding members of the Bronies of New South Wales. Ever since uh, we started the group, I got Luke, Gary, and a whole bunch of them, like the other awesome guys, and the main admin of Australia, uh, Damo Derby, what I call uh, what's his name? Well, yeah, but he's really cool. Damo is the, one of the best ponies around in Australia, and he's helping us out right now as we speak. How did the Bronies of New South Wales got started? Uh, it's actually it began like before I joined MPS. I was like looking around, I was watching one of the streams, and like 
people were talking about, oh, is there any New South Wales bodies in that in this area? It's like, yeah, I am. And like, everyone's like, oh, why not we make a group? And like, these two guys just came up and like, okay. Surprisingly, I know, I know two of them in like, I mutual, mutual friends. Like, one of them actually goes to a church with me back in, back in the days when I first came to Australia. And it's really cool actually. And, but I haven't met him yet. But yeah. We we met we, we made a group after that and it's really cool. Okay, that's interesting, that's interesting. So um Amiro, the next question. What kind of activities do the bronies of New South Wales usually do? We do many, many adventurous games. We also hold really, really like collaboration uh, activities with uh, other neighboring brony groups like the Canberra Bronies. We had this awesome uh, swim, swimming pool meetup and it was a blast, seriously. It, the main idea behind that was to get these bronies out to actually uh, have fun and not stay at home and just do nothing. We just go out and actually communicate and have fun and have bonding session. We also had like a, a really awesome parties. Uh, I think this year we're going to have the most meetups as often as possible. On to the MBS member questions. So um, since we got three hosts and all the questions are kind of, well, there's a lot. So I'm going to play a little game. So Amiral and Joey, pick a number from 1 to 10. 5, 7. Okay, so I'm going to play with the random number generator and whoever comes the closest to that number will go first. So oh, it's 7 and 5, right? Okay, shake, 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 shake. Okay, Joey, you go first. Okay. <laughs> Amiro, pick again. Nine. Damn. Um, one. <laughs> oh, okay, Amiro, it's nine. So you go second. <laughs> okay, so um, Joey, you go first. First question was from Kawin Chu. He asked, how would you describe what you do exactly by professional means? Mm. Uh, basically, uh, what I do is, what I do is professional. I gather information. I don't solicit information. I don't gossip around. I take information. Like, let's say, you want me to give an example? I'll give an example. Bonicon uh, in Philippines is coming up and they wanted some people to realize what's going on around that area. So I'm just being a facilitator to let everyone around the world know that there's a Bonicon in Philippines. And yeah, if you're interested, you can have a look and see what's going on there. And pretty much spread the information. Spread love, spread everything. Yeah, really good stuff. From what has been heard, you exchange info between groups about their members and events. Have you ever gotten any remark from others in which you are involving yourself in gossip between groups? Yes, I actually got a lot of uh, complaints about that, especially from SBS and uh, uh, Perth Bronies. They were actually suspicious of what I am because of my role as it's very ambiguous and actually people were coming up with threats with me and saying um, they're going to report me that I'm, I'm a scammer spy because ever since the attacks on MBS a long time ago about trolls and stuff and the sabotage and the thing uh, I've been spreading the news about trolls being attacked and everyone were on high alert and people were very aware of what's going on because before that back then voting groups are all open so basically, uh, what I have to uh, assure them is, uh, look, I'm I'm not going to, I'm not going, I'm, I'll be very clean and honest with you. I'm just going to tell you, I'll tell you what's going on around the world. I am not going to solicit, I'm not going to say anything bad because basically a diplomat is a person who stands on neutral points and if he thinks it's fair, you need to think a lot before you say something. I think the most important thing is, okay, you need to think first before you say something. Because afterward, if you say something, you may hurt the member. I think I went through quite a lot of this experience, and I, I pretty much regret it, especially with the Singaporean bodies, because I think now they had a bit of a bad impression what I'm doing. All right. Um, have members or individuals of a group ever complained about a breach of group privacy or felt uncomfortable with what you're doing? Oh, yes. Uh, I can note a few individuals, if you don't mind. Can I note uh, some individuals, like, say their names? No, better or, not, better not. Like, all right. Uh, there was this guy, like, uh, he's the administrator of uh, this voting group in Canada, and he was saying to me, you're, you're, this is my group, you can't do this, you can't do that, because uh, this, you're going to endanger a lot of what's going on, and this is a local group, and I want to keep it internet are uh, just normal, just how it is and stuff. And that was kind of a serious 
uh, big consideration for me because I, for one, I'm doing something that is something like exchanging information and this is something that's very, uh, very critical for me to be considered for what I'm doing because, yeah. And I also got a lot of uh, opposition from Singapore as well, Singapore and Zonics. They were kind of mindful of what I'm doing and they were doubting what I'm doing is the right thing. And I always question myself, am I doing it correctly? And, yeah, I think basically it's about trial and error about trying to do the right thing and trying to not to say the wrong things at the same time and well basically it's right and wrong and not not disseminating uh, gossip as what people would think of me as I'm one doing but I try not to do that next question is from Tristan Hazel from the uh, Project Equestria FB group he asks yeah. why are the artists still not posting anything huh Alright, I as one of the lead artists, uh, one of the main artists of um, that group, very simple, because I have a lot of assignments. Uh, apparently, College of Fine Arts it hasn't been very merciful of me. They have been uh, pounding me with lots of assignments. This week, apparently, I had three assignments due, and I have to finish them at once. So, judging from how it is going, uh, I'm like, oh my gosh, this is hard for me, I can't do this. And I have, I have to find a way to get this done. Sorry about that. But I think I'll deliver as fast as I can. So the next question is from Emilio Daniel. Where have I heard that name before? Hmm. I wonder. Yeah. I wonder. He sounds familiar. Frenchman. Is he from France? Huh. Sounds like a Frenchman. Yeah, true indeed. So anyway, um, he asks, Are you in contact with any famous bronies? Famous bronies, huh? Uh... If I know not, um, not yet though. I think everyone's just trying to hide their real identities until I really. Oh, I think there's this guy, uh, uh, Gratisios or whatever that, that that guy from uh from from Singapore Bronies. Uh, I think it probably would, would be the other part where I say that. But yeah, there's uh, apparently that I knew one Singaporean Bronie who actually had the same level of drawing as Joey. And he is really, really good, trust me. I, I think I think it is considered one of the really good bodies that have got featured on EQD like a few times. That would be him. Famous bodies other than that would be I know Josh Law, he is one of the awesome music bodies. Australia is full of them. Oh yes. Yes they are. Yeah. Uh, Luke Gary, the admin of uh Bonnie in New South Wales, he's also a Bonnie musician, uh, along with Emilio Daniel. Uh wait, Emilio Daniel? Wait, there's oh Emil Emil, Emil. There's this guy in MBS named Emil. He's also a funny musician as well. I think they got featured once in the video. Oh. Um, yeah. Emil, Emil Jihad. Jihad. I don't, I don't know. It was how that guy in that video said. I think check him out, right? Yes, I have. I have checked him out. Okay, Um. so on to the next question. Joey, yeah, you handle this? Okay, next question is from James Vanilla Tapi. As a brownie mm-hmm. ambassador... <laughs> Which country will you visit first and why? I want to go to Japan, man. Like, I know there's lots of them in Japan and they're just ready to pop up when I just fear them because I, my Japanese is decent. It's, it's very, I'm like, I'm, I'm good to go there. And New Zealand is also one possible place to go as well because I have quite a lot of friends there. And pretty much the Aussie bodies and New Zealand share uh, a, kind of a close tie together. Mars Fizz asks, if you had an OC pony, what would his cutie mark be? My pony is based on this Assassin's Creed concept. And uh, I think, although they want to use, I want, I'm so tempted to use the Assassin's Creed logo, I use instead the former identity of myself, which is uh, a Emerald symbol. Uh, Emerald, a symbol of an Emerald. Because uh, once a long time ago, I used to be part of a bunch of uh, 13 friends who used to call themselves the 13 Chaos. And we kind of like I'm the number seven chaos member. And basically I had a number seven on the Amazon and that's my cutie mark because even though I become a body, I still remember my heritage of myself being one part of the member. I pride myself of being part of the friendship group. It's like some kind of companions or something like that. Yeah, go on. Next question from from the same person is do tell us about the tale of your banishment to the great Australian outback. 
I guess it all started when I I was exiled from Malaysia because I was incompetent for what I am. I wasn't really skilled in much and pretty much didn't know life in Malaysia. So I had to find a new home in Australia because I have to make uh, life, I mean, make, make do with life. Yes, correct, make do with life. I have to make do with life and survive. And the only way is to make new friends. Okay, next question. How did you find out about the Malaysian Brony Society? Derek told me about, oh, look, there's these guys who are with uh, MBS and stuff. What is your personal opinion on the Brony fandom? Personally, I think it has really bounded a lot of people together. Uh, despite how people think the ponies are, I mean, ponies are like, okay, you have seen a lot of these videos now that condemn, con uh, condemn ponies for being awkward individuals who are social outcasts and stuff like that. You, you might have heard on the internet about that. But we are actually a bunch of guys who like to watch the show and we are actually bonding because of the show and it's really, really nice. It's not a cult. It's not some kind of gathering. It's just a group of friends. We just like to watch the show and it's really nice. And I can tell you one thing. We do care about each other. We do really care about each other. So I think we have ran out of questions unless you guys can think of something fast right now. Uh, 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 I, I um, yeah, I swear not. So anyway, um, if you have any concerns, questions, or suggestions for the show, contact us at the MBS show at gmail.com. Andrew, thanks again for coming down. Um, we really appreciate no worries, it. Thanks. No worries. It's all good. Yes, good. So I've been Norman Sanzo. And I'm Comrade Commissar. And I'm Joe H. Hua. Ben known as Recycle Tiger. And I'm Andrew. Well, basically, yeah. We'll see ya. Tiger yeah. out. Is that a wrap? Yep, that's a wrap. It's time to get moving. It's, it's time, time to, to get, get going. going. A trip is always great. Always totally great. The planning and packing. The hustling and bustling. Let's hurry, can't be late. This'll be the day. We fly away. Somewhere super new. So super new. Singing it together, me and you. We will go there together. Adventuring can be a little bit scary. Will it turn out okay? Will it turn out okay? We're wishing and hoping. We know what we're doing. Don't want to lose our way. This will be the day. We fly away. Somewhere super new. So super new. Sing it together, me and you. We will go there together. We're flying. Exploring, we love the view. I've never ever seen a sky this blue. We really are rolling, we're glad to be going. This trip is great so far. Gotta say that it's great. We're heading who knows where. As soon as we get there, we'll find our wishing star. Super new. So super new.